All I want to do is just smoke something that's just an herbal plant. You, you're kidding me, right? I would have done anything, anything for this country, right? Come on, get real. Yeah, I appreciate everybody coming out. This is my first time ever speaking. Like I said, I'm new to this whole game, but I, I'm not going to lay down anymore. I'm here for you guys. I'm here for the patients. I'm here for everybody. Not just PTSD and for veterans. I'm here for all you guys. I won't lay down. Me or Mike. Now, we're, we're missing somebody. I'm missing a, uh, a gentleman. Uh, Rick, where you at, brother? Shay. Ricardo Pereira to the stage. No? Hey, buddy. Hey, Don. Nice to meet you, bro. Hey. Awesome. Awesome. I keep getting knocked offline. I'm, I'm podcasting, and I keep getting knocked off. I don't know why. We're live now. Now that nobody's speaking, we're live. Thanks, Here we go. You still here? Rachel, Rachel. I see a couple of you standing in outer space. I know. I do that, too, sometimes. We are going to have another speaker. He's from the neighboring state of New Jersey. He's done a lot of work to push forward the medical program there and really help patients know their rights. He's a registered nurse himself and a very informed physician. Give it up for Ken Bolsky, the executive director of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. I am an RN. I, I've been an RN for 39 years. And I've worked mostly in New Jersey, but I also worked right here in Center City at some of the top hospitals in the country as an ICU, CCU nurse. Thank you. And uh, I just want to let you know that uh, uh, the nurses have been very supportive of medical marijuana. The, the New Jersey State Nurses Association endorsed medical marijuana in 2003, and that was really the start of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey. In 2004, the American Nurses Association endorsed medical marijuana and they represent over three million nurses in the country. Registered nurses are the largest healthcare profession in the country, and we are the most trusted profession in the nation. And right here in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania State Nurses Association endorsed medical marijuana in 2013. And they've been going around all parts of Pennsylvania and giving lectures and educational programs for their nurse colleagues on the endocannabinoid system. There's this very new system that's been discovered that explains why marijuana works in the body, that we have receptors in every organ of the human body for the components of marijuana. And that's why it is so safe and effective for so many diseases and symptoms and conditions. And nurses are learning about this now right here in Pennsylvania, thanks to the Pennsylvania State Nurses Association. But I also want to say a word about the Pennsylvania Medical Society. Pennsylvania Medical Society testified at the, this is the organization that represents the physicians in, this, in, this, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. They said that, well, no, we're not really opposed to medical marijuana. We just don't want it yet. We don't want it. We want to study the issue some more. Nothing more to study. Well, you know, medical marijuana has been in, 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 since, in California since 1996. That's almost 20 years. How long does it take these doctors to study medical marijuana? That's what I'd like to know. How much, how much time do they want? Five years, 10 years, 20 years? Don't they realize that patients are suffering now and some patients are dying because they can't get access to medical marijuana? This is a disgrace. The first credo of the physician is to do no harm, and yet they are harming so many people by denying access to medical marijuana. They say, well, you know, we joined with the American Medical Association five years ago to task the federal government to reschedule marijuana. Well, how's that working out for you? How's that? How, what kind of progress have you made in five years in getting the medical ma medical marijuana rescheduled? I haven't seen any myself. And then the Pennsylvania Medical Society, they deny that there are there is evidence of marijuana safety and efficacy. Well, I'm here to tell the Pennsylvania Medical Society that. Their gold standard trials have been done for medical marijuana. The randomized, placebo-controlled, 
clinical trials of marijuana, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical, clinical trials of marijuana have been done in California, and they've been replicated. So we have this. We have the studies that we need. The only studies that have not been done are the large-scale clinical trials, and the federal government's been blocking these large-scale clinical trials. So what kind of, what kind of uh, study does the Pennsylvania Medical Society want to do before they will endorse medical marijuana? That's what I'd like to know. And the, uh, let's see, what else? Oh, you know what else they said? They said, we want the legislature to give us money to study medical marijuana. So it's like, well, you know, before we endorse it. Uh, so that's what you want, that's what it's all about, a money grab? You know, you're, you're not going to be able to do this, the studies that will, uh, the large-scale clinical trials, because the federal government's blocking them. So what are you doing with the money? We... We have it. We, we, have the, we have the evidence that we need. Marijuana is a safe and effective medicine. We shouldn't keep it from patients who need it any longer. Yes. Yes. Right. One other thing the Pennsylvania Medical Society said was that no medical society in the country, 50 medical societies there are in the country, and not one of them has endorsed medical marijuana. Not one. So what's that about? What's up with doctors? That's what I'd like to know. Any doctors here today to defend themselves? You know, I don't see any. You know, is it is it about money? Is that what it's about? You know, I mean, the, obviously the pharmaceutical industry stands to lose money if medical marijuana is legalized here in Pennsylvania. Marijuana can be can be substituted for expensive pharmaceutical drugs. Always about money. It may very well all just boil down to money and uh, physicians and. Uh, pharmaceutical industry work hand in hand. One supports the other. And so maybe they see it as a threat to their finances. Are you live, Lefty? But, you yes. know, I've worked with doctors for 39 years, and I know also that it's about control. Right now, doctors can want to be in control of the uh, health care system. And, well, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. You can have patients in control of the health care system, and that's what medical marijuana will do especially if you have a home cultivation provision in your medical marijuana bill here in Pennsylvania, when it passes, because it will pass, trust me. And this will, having a home cultivation provision in your medical marijuana bill will allow patients to grow their own medicine for pennies. It will, it will allow them to titrate their, their, medicine, their medicine to control their symptoms. And it will put the patient back in control, and that's what nurses are about. We're about empowering patients. We're about putting patients back into the center of the healthcare industry. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, Pennsylvania Medical Society, Jack Hughes. Make sure you go online, especially if you're from New Jersey. Go to cmnj.org. And you can also join the Coalition of Medical Marijuana Friends Group on Facebook as well. Our next speaker is also an out-of-towner. She traveled all the way from Lancaster, uh, Pennsylvania. She is the executive director of Lancaster Normal. She's doing what we're doing. They're out in Lancaster and spending a lot of time in Harrisburg as a volunteer, fighting for the movement. Give it up for Dev Guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't do all that much. It's you guys, man. Did you see what they did in Philly? Did they see? Do you see what they did for you? Do you see? Yeah. Amazing. Yes, I'm Deb Guy. That's what she said. I am from Lancaster, Amish country. I actually live in Hempfield Township. Go figure. Yeah. Do you know why it's called Hempfield Township? Because we used to grow hemp there. What a novel idea. We were actually told we had to grow hemp there or we would be taxed by the government. That was years ago. Obviously, now we're not allowed to even look at a hemp seed to grow in our yard or we would be arrested immediately. I'm not here today as a mother of a child. I choose not to have children and when I meet the people that I meet and I meet the mothers and I meet the children and I meet people affected by the stupid laws that we have, I know why I'm not having children. But I love these women and they're amazing and they're strong and I look up to them and I thank them for being a face when we didn't have one. We also have veterans and I am not here as a veteran in any heroic, beautiful sense of the term, but I am a veteran of life, as the rest of you probably are. 
Um, I'm here today as an actual patient, as someone whose life was saved by cannabis, probably like many other of you probably have been saved by cannabis and may not even realize it, because it is truly the most recreational, most therapeutically recreational drug, or I'm sorry, flower herb that you could ever ingest into your beautiful body if you would love to love yourself and give yourself a new life. <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> I'm a little passionate about this. It did save my life. Five years ago, I was not the person I am standing in front of you right now. I was a much different, different, ugly person, and I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> but I'm here today as a human being and actually a criminal because what I did to save my life made me just that, a criminal. And this is no longer about just the moms and the veterans. It's about human beings. It's about you, and it's about me, and about the every person standing on every corner who's waiting for their perfect Savior. <laughs> Where's Jesus? I saw him earlier. We should have a conversation. Meet me in the back. Bring the papers. Just oh, wait, I didn't say that. Anyway, that is why I'm here today. I just want to let you know that if you really want to change your life and you want the ability to make decisions for your own health, call your representatives. Call your local government, call your city council, call your judges, call your police, call your doctors. I don't, don't just start at the government, start with the person next to you. And as the, my, my rule of thumb is to educate. That's the only goal that you have as a human being. If you believe in this, educate yourself, educate the people around you, and continue to educate yourself until you think you've been educated enough, and then do it again, because you're going to need to. And that's the message I'm going to leave you with. Much love to Poe and Vanessa and Rachel and Mike and everybody who made this today possible. Because three, almost three years ago, I watched this man right here have his little ankles bent up over his head and him ass ended. And it was ugly. But that was a new position for you probably, huh? Anyway, here we are today to celebrate what he went through, what they all went through, what we all went through, and what we saw. And it's time to celebrate the good things and create a better future. So make sure that you yeah. educate. <laughs> Much love, Philly. Educate. Educate. I love you. All right, yeah, who's, you guys are still alive. Look, there's some celebrities yeah. in the crowd. There's Jen Tavara, uh, the, the Bo Stone chef in Philadelphia. Check out her show, High Cuisine, on Scrabble TV. Next to her, Dr. Christopher Spear. Legend. She's just a fucking legend. So if you're still with me, if you're here for the rally, why don't you come around? I haven't smoked a joint in like 10 minutes. Does anyone have pot left? Yeah. Can I have a joint up here? You know, you should take the time to think and relax that we're, we're being able to smoke marijuana outside and no one's doing anything about it. Um, and, and like, like, that's a great thing. I'm just lighting this joint up here. For a purpose, but it's good. And it's a communal way for everyone to get together. So we have some more speakers. So if you're here for the rally, you can just come around. It's getting shadier over here. Whoever has joints, we need new fucking joints in the front of this thing. Sorry. All right. New joints to the front of the stage. You got papers? All right. So if you have joints in the crowd, come around and smoke joints with people some more again. And listen to some of the new speakers we have. This next woman speaking, she's so fucking important to Pennsylvania marijuana legalization. Luann's daughter, Diana, has a rare form of epilepsy. She's been fighting out in the middle of the state, hitting wall after wall and still going forward. We've invited her down here to Philadelphia. We've started to create a very interesting relationship between each other. She's a very funny woman. And the way I love you. All right, I'm, I'm starting to get stoned. Here. Yeah. Luann Speeds. Wow, this is amazing. I am here from central Pennsylvania, the Mechanicsburg area, which is across the river from Harrisburg. And I have been fighting for two and a half years to help to get medical marijuana to the Pennsylvania citizens of our great state. Um, I am a mother. I'm also a grandmother, as well as a medical marijuana advocate. I support a comprehensive medical marijuana program. Basically, what that means is a full plant medicine that is supervised 
by a doctor that can help anybody and everybody that needs it. Not any specific illness. Not just epilepsy. Not just PTSD. Not just fibromyalgia or Alzheimer's or dementia. We want to include chronic pain sufferers, sufferers and Crohn's disease. Let me tell you a little bit about my daughter. She's almost 18 years old. She had intractable epilepsy and she has that since she has been nine days old. Over the years, Diana has had numerous injuries such as requiring staples in her head. In March, she started having her drop seizures again and she fell and dropped, fell, lost six permanent teeth. Now, she's never gonna get those back. They are gone. She's also fallen on her face and required to have stitches in her face. Um, those, will, those wounds will heal eventually. However, she has suffered. Um, developmentally, she is not of a one and a half year old, maybe if I'm lucky. Um, at night, I tuck her into bed at night. And when I go to wake her the following day, I hope that she'll be there when I go to wake her up in the next day. It's very disheartening to feel that you may put your child to bed and not have them the next day when you wake them up. I fight for all those in Pennsylvania that need access to this amazing herb. Thank you so much. Thank you, Luann. All right, well, everyone, we're gonna go on a march after this as well, where I hope you brought more weed. And we're gonna go to a party later tonight, and we're gonna do more of that. And we're just gonna enjoy the fact that uh, cannabis is so fucking awesome, and people that smoke it are usually awesome too. I don't know that many assholes that get high, do you? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, just it's like, and, and if they do, they just, just like, right away, we're just gonna just just nice probably. khakis, dickhead. Uh, all right, well, this week we teamed up to make a video to promote this, and I met Carl, who's a pretty big stoner that happens to dress like Whitney Houston. We had an old song, The Greatest Herb of All, and we decided to record it. Why? Because I was fighting viciously with my girlfriend, and I was really high on dabs, and I'm like, this is a great idea. So we fucking did it, you know, and it was fun. And uh, and Carl was going to sing it here, but we really want everyone to come to the after party to see Carl sing it at the after party while we're all doing dabs and whatever, making love on the concrete while reggae plays. Isn't that what we're doing? Yes! All right. Um, so I'm going to introduce Carl, and then Carl is going to sing the greatest herbal ball at the party, uh, so you should come to the party and hear that, because we're going to be fucking throwing down, bring whatever you want. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Max. Give it up for Carl! Come on! You think I'm crazy, Carl? Absolutely. Hello, Philadelphia. Come on, everyone. Hello, Philadelphia. You know, this is a very momentous occasion, and I want to say thank you very much to, you know, to PA, you know, Poe. He has uh, teamed up with Diamond Entertainment and Radican Solutions, and we came to you today because the GLBT community supports this, and I support it for them. There you go. I love that banner. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Oh, absolutely. Pictures. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I, you know, I was here for Philadelphia Gay Pride, and we actually had a meeting um, shortly after, and I said I want to represent something for the GLT community that I believe in, even since there was HIV and, of course, things of other natures that allowed people to have seizures. And listening to that young lady's story with her daughter really touched my heart. And if you know me and I know you, our children that are growing now are the greatest of all. Is that not true? Uh, can you come up here for a second? Come on up here. Come on, sweetheart. I love children. Oh. 
What's your, what's your name? Theta. Oh, Theta. And your name, sweetheart? Bella. Theta and Bella. Can everybody please give them a hand, round of applause? <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. All right, Diva, with her hair up and glasses on. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be at this Sorry, fantastic God. after party. I hope to see everyone there. Um, I want to, first of all, this organization, this actually, they have some cool t-shirts. I want the one, Poe, Poe, Poe. He doesn't understand anything. He's high. Poe. I want one of those t-shirts right there. And this came from um, Sub Caesar, so I'm going to throw this out on the count of three. Somebody catch it. All right. All right, she's a baseball player. She grabbed it right out of the air. All right, well, I want to say thank you to everybody for having me here this uh, today here in Philadelphia at Love Park. This is amazing that you can actually smoke weed in a park. How about it? How about it? Absolutely. All right, well, we are going to make a statement here right now, and we're going to all take a couple of steps to freedom for marijuana. So let's give that a big round of applause. And Mr. Poe can come on back up. Poe. 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 You're shaking hands and kissing babies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Poe in the house. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. You know, this is great. We should just keep doing this and building it and building it. 1,500 people said they were going to come on the page. I know as an organizer that's absolute bullshit, but I thank every single one of you for coming out. And next time, bring your friend. Christina over here brought her three daughters. She's teaching her daughters to think with an open mind. You know, like, grab your parents, change someone's mind, bring someone to a ride like this that doesn't smoke weed, man. You know what I mean? You guys are all awesome, because you do. But let's get other people that don't smoke weed here. So we're going to go on a march. Vanessa and Mike White are with you guys. You're going to make this happen. And I'm going to go get prepared for the party. I'm going to shave my balls for the party. What? Can I hear that lighter back? Yeah. 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 So yeah, seriously, thanks everyone. Come to the party, you know what I mean? And if you don't have the money to go to the party, come see me privately. And if you fucking do, and then you say that, and I find out, I see you're buying shit at the party, I'm going to get someone to be up. <laughs> All right, here's the All right, thank you. Thanks everyone. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, Annie, pal. <laughs> All right, everybody, you guys ready for a march? Yeah. We're not going that far. Relax, donors. We're going to 1628 JFK Boulevard. It is the office of Senator, U.S. Senator Toomey. He's a Republican. How do you think he feels about marijuana? <laughs> no, yeah, shady. So we have this unique opportunity to make headlines. Walk over there, publicly declare that he supports legal marijuana, and then we're going to move on because right around the corner is Senator Bob Casey's office. He's a Democrat, and he hasn't gone on the record either way letting us know what his position is. If you're an elected official, do you ever take a position on the issue? What does he think of this legislation? There's like 100 bills on the table. What is he even talking about? So we need to place pressure on him to take a stand. And then we're going to end up at Governor Wolf's office. And that's at Broad and Locust. So if you can't walk and, you know, you have disabilities, no worries. You can meet us at the last location. We hope to be there at least within the hour. And if not, we'll see you at the One Art Center in West Philly. Thanks, everyone. If you want to tag pictures, use hashtag Smoke Down Philly. All right, we're going to line up over here. We have a whole paparazzi of cameras, yo, so let's use this opportunity to send a message to the people. Line up at the front here, and you'll see flags and banners leading the way. Thanks, everyone. Christian. Thank you. All right. All right, stars. Look at all these stars. Look at them all. Stars everywhere. I love it. Look at this. This is great. This is freedom. The taste of freedom. This is what freedom looks like. 
This is what freedom looks like and smells like. Yeah, boy. I love it. I love it. Hot shirts. I love everybody's hot shirts. This is great. I'm loving this. Yeah. Everybody must get stoned. Thank you very much. Let me, uh, hey, I'm on their site. Yo, what's up? Say hello. We're live. We're live. We are live on the internet. Live on the internet, y'all. There we go. All right, they're all getting ready to go here. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? It's good to see you. Uh, good. How are you feeling? Nice to see you. I know. I know. We're live podcasting. Say hello. Hey. What's, up? Hands. What's, going on? What's going on? Hey, how are you doing? Hello. How you doing, bro? Good to meet you. Hey, Mike. I think I met you once, maybe somewhere, possibly. Yeah. I've been these guys for about six years. Wow, yeah. Maybe more than that, seven years. Nice. Nice. Fighting the government. Yes. Yes. What do you have to say? Anything to say to the to the world? Patience over politics. See, see, you always get a good quote in a crowd, in a great crowd, activist crowd. Everybody has sound bites. I love it. I would say also my doctor told me to. You know my doctor. Hey, here you are. What's going on? I got here so late. How are you? How was your drive in? Nice day, hi. Hi, thank you for your speech. That was thank very you. good. I am Lefty. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Lefty. You're Lefty Grant? Yes. Oh, nice to meet you. Yes. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to Oh, okay. And okay. Nice. Danny Storms, and you did a lot yes. of her big Yeah, big yeah, big yeah big always, big. always. We're still alive, so don't curse. No, you can curse. I'm kidding. But yeah, yeah, we're just, I, I, I laugh, podcast and everything. And uh, oh, yeah. yeah, we're hopefully we'll have uh, more than five viewers. <laughs> oh, you know, we get lots. We get yeah. Once you put it up there, people will watch it. Live, we have a few. We got a few. Thank you. That was great. That was great for speaking. I'll just get me. Man. It's crazy. Well, now that I don't live there, I guess not. Right now, I just want to hear my daughter say hi. Like everyone responded. Yeah. And I was love getting emails. Like, I'm not really upset in my speech. That's one of the things I want to say. Really? Except when I go up there and talk to him. Like, what about what when did she say? Dear God, I have never heard of What did she say now? That was so funny. Not, uh, in any way, Joel? Her hum turns into a mum, mum, mum. But I don't know if it's deliberate or if she's just nice. Minus me. How long has she been on cannabis? Just, she was on cannabis a year and a half, but I wanted to take her off because the like, job like, seizures came back okay. in March. Well, I, and okay. You know what? I hear you on what you're saying. Yeah, 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 I feel that. So yeah, I, I have to get those under control. Like, like, oh, like, like, since I don't know what strains you use, all her seizures were under control except for the drop. She had nothing else. No, man. Get it right. Come off the oil. My neurologist actually has it. I'm the neck person. He's just like, where is it? You gotta get her back down there. I will. Well, because, uh, that's, but that's the bad thing. We need to know what we're getting. Yeah. That's another issue. Yeah. You want to give your child something that's safe. Yeah. And not yeah, other chemicals. Right. Right. You want right. to right. know what's in it. You want to make sure yeah. there's no pesticides. There's no. Yeah. Did you guys you know, come in together? Rat, uh, rat killer in it or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it has to be grown extremely. Hey. You know, delicate facility. I think that, you know, that's how you get that. I feel like you should 